Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today we're going to be discussing how to create your own letter half trifold brochure. So we've all seen the traditional letter size documents, uh, trifold brochures. Today we're going to try something a little bit different and create a letter half version of a trifold. You can get really nice layouts this way. But not only that, I'm going to show you how to create a facing pages document uh, so you can have the setup much like you see here in my, on my screen where you have all three panels uh, facing each other. It just makes for an easier way to design rather than have them um, designed individually, stacked up on each other in your pages panel. So we'll get into that and I'm going to show you a little trick on how to achieve this. So let's get started. On my screen here, this is the final product here. So we're going to set up a new document here and start from scratch. I'm going to go to File, New, Document. And my, my settings here are exactly how I want them, but um, this is what how you would achieve it. Go to the Print tab, View More Presets, and uh, the, the document size that we want is letter half. So it's five and a half by eight and a half. So go ahead and click that. Um, it's going to revert to a portrait orientation. Just click the landscape version so we can have a wider uh, workspace. And let's take facing page, actually leave facing pages on. And let's set the number of pages to six. We're going to need six pages altogether. Um, we're not going to worry so much for uh, columns and margins at this point, okay? So once you've done that, you can hit your preview tab here to see what your page would look like and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to hit create. Now if I go to my pages panel here, there are my pages. One through six, first page is on its own, six page, page six is on its own, but two and three and four and five are, are together. I want to achieve this setting where I have all three faced together. So let's go ahead and do that. So if you notice, if I drag page one over here, it's not going to drag. It won't let you. So there is one step that you have to make before you can achieve that uh, process. So I'm going to go up to my uh, pages panel options right in the top right hand corner. These uh, set of four lines. I'm going to click that and we want to unlock allow, allow document pages to shuffle. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that and at this point I, now I'm going to grab my page one and I'm going to drag it over here and now as you can see I've got three pages that are now facing each other. I'm going to do the same thing with page six. I'm going to click on it and just drag it into this set. So now I have two sets of three pages that are facing uh, one another. So obviously when you're working this way it's easier to do layouts and uh, especially if you want to take graphics from one panel to another or images for that matter you, you don't want to be guessing to see how it would look like. So right off the bat there are three panels and it's pretty straightforward at this point. So now you can go back into the pages um, uh, panel options and you could unlock that or lock it back up. It's not necessary so I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay so as uh, much like the trifold brochure for a, a standard letter size brochure, the pages are as follows. So one, this far right hand page on your first set of panels, that would be your cover. Number two, three, and four. So the bottom three panels would become your inside pages or panels. And then page five and then six over here in the middle. Okay. So what I tend to do is I work from the cover and then go um, two, three, four, put the most important information in and then go from there. So we're going to build maybe the cover here. I'm not going to do the entire document, but I do want to show you how I achieved this here. Okay. So um, first thing I want to do is go to my first page and grab my rectangle frame tool. Start in the top left hand corner and go ahead and drag out a box that fills the entire panel. Go to your swatches if you don't have swatches. Actually, I'm going to need that swatch from here. I should have saved that. I'm just going to get the color code and then we can go from there. I'm going to double click that and grab that code and hit cancel. Now I can go to this page here. 
I'm just going to turn one of these colors into my new code here. And then I'm going to save that color into my swatches. Add CMYK swatch and we're good. So now your CMYK swatch, it's basically a coral uh, Pantone that I, I like to use. So there it is there and we're good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to create um, on the first on the first uh, document here, I did create six um, layers for each page, okay? So we're not going to do layers for this because I'm only going to do the cover page to show you how I achieved that, that, that one uh, cover page there. So um, now that I have my color, I'm just going to go to my libraries and I have a um, pattern here that looks kind of retro 80s uh, themed. And I wanted this. I wanted this uh, this pattern to almost look like a lipstick type thing because the the brochure that I'm designing here is for a, a fictional um, makeup line, okay, called Coral Cosmetics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this and drag it, and then drop it right into there, okay. Now you notice um, it's really big, so Shift Option Command C, and then. Um, what do I want to do? I'm going to go to my properties panel and go to effects, transparency, and make it multiply. Or did I do overlay? I believe I did overlay. Let me just check what I did here to get that exact setting. So, transparency. Let's see here. Let's just move this out of the way. Oh, that's what I did. Okay, transparency and it's overlay at 30%. Okay, so let's do that. Effects, transparency, and I'm going to do overlay 30%. Let's try that again. So I'm having a little issue here. So I'm going to grab my selection, or sorry, my rectangle frame tool, drag out a box. I'm going to make it that Pantone color. Go to my libraries, grab that pattern, drop it in. And let's go to my properties. Transparency, overlay, 30%. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted to get to, okay? So once you have get to that point, hit OK. So you can see that it was the cover of my first uh, page here, and it's going to look like this. So I'm just going to grab this logo that I've created and bring it over to this page. Let's see if I can paste it right in place. Paste in place. So if you grab something from another page, copy it, um, go to even an, another document and edit paste in place. We'll paste it exactly from where you grabbed it in the first place. But a shortcut for that is Shift Option Command V as in Victor. Okay. So now I want to bring this main image in, which almost looks like it's a tear, tearing through the page um, to highlight the, the subject's lips here. So let's let's go to Photoshop for this case, okay? So I have a photo here that I'm going to open. There it is there. And I want to um, quick select the the image here, but I just want the tear and obviously the woman's the woman's face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my quick selection tool. Now I could just go ahead and start uh, going over these areas here to highlight the edges of the tear. But if you're on a newer version of Photoshop, I think 2017 and uh, ahead, um, in the quick selection tool, you have what's called the select subject. So Adobe Photoshop can actually try to pick that up for you. So I'm going to try that out, hit select subject. There might be some areas that have to clean up, but at least that gives you a starting point. So you can see the marching ants around my image here. I'm going to zoom in. 
there are some areas that I'd like to clean out. So in the quick selection tool, you have a add to the selection, which, which is a positive brush, and then subtract from the selection, which is the negative. Uh, a great way of toggling between the two is stay in the positive and then just hold down your alt or option on a Mac um, to bring that in. So I'm staying within the woman's uh, face to bring them out and then if it hops it out then hold down alt and bring that right back to the edge the best you can okay now I'm not gonna make this perfect because it's going to take it would take quite a little time but you get the idea I'm just gonna do kind of a rough version of this Let's just say that I was happy with that, okay? So I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm gonna to go to my select and mask uh, option up here. In the top uh, bar up here, right next to select subject, I'm gonna click select and mask. I'm gonna turn the opacity down a bit there. Um, now that looks pretty good to me. I've, I could probably maybe uh, use a smart radius to pick up some more pixels on those edges. You could add a feather to soften the edges a bit, maybe play around with the shift edge and contrast to get to where you want to achieve. But let's just say I'm happy with that. You could hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask to this. So I'm just going to knock out that background. And what I also did, because I wanted the color to kind of match um, the theme of my brochure, is I created a, I believe, a hue and saturation layer mask, I'm sorry, a layer adjustment, and then maybe brought down um, I was trying to find, yeah, maybe something like that. I honestly can't remember the exact setting, so I'm just gonna try to guess at this point, and then maybe revert to my here, my um, to this document and then see uh, maybe something like that maybe desaturate a little bit more when I've achieved that I'm okay I'm just gonna go back to my layers panel I'm gonna hold down my shift key actually let's go to yeah my libraries are there so I'm gonna I have my hue and saturation layer selected I'm gonna hold down my shift key and also select the other layer and drag those two together to my libraries panel okay so as you can see there's the the latest version of the cutout of this woman with the tear effect and now that I'm done with this I'm going to close it I don't really have to sell uh, may as well save it just in case save it to uh, yeah I'll save it there that's fine but I have it in my in my um, library, so I know it's there. So I'm going to minimize that. Let's go back to InDesign, go to my libraries, and there's the latest version. So I'm just going to drag that onto my page and drag out a box. And there you go. That's how you would uh, create something like that. So I was pretty close, actually, to the what I had in the original version. Um, I just lucked out because the lipstick, just playing with the hue a little bit and desaturating it actually matched up well with how my background color, my Pantone color is in this case. So that's a great starting point to, to create a trifold letter half brochure. It just switches it up from the traditional, you know, um, letter document. So from here, like I said, what I would do is go to page two, page three, four, and then so on. So take your content and rank it in order of importance in your um, brochure and see what you come up with. I'd love to see what your uh, work looks like. So do share it with me and I can uh, give you my thoughts and maybe we can uh, talk about how, how you did on this project, okay? So that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos on design tutorials, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye now.